Want to get more sales without being salesy? Well, you've come to the right place. Check this out. This is the Sales Gorilla Podcast. All right, welcome back to the Sales Gorilla Podcast with your host, the Sales Gorilla himself, Landon Porter. Landon, how you doing today, man? I'm awesome sauce. I'm firing up a bowl. Firing up a bowl, smoking some tobacco out of the wood pipe as we start the podcast. People are like, I know you're in Colorado, but uh, is that really professional <laughs> to start the podcast by firing up a bowl? And you know what I say to that. I do know what you say to that. That's what, yep. I, that's what I really like about you, actually, is I think one of the things that really attracted me into your world was uh, you're, just, you're just you. And that's so, that's so rare in the sales and marketing game. Some will, some don't. That's the point. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's how you get to be you when you're not playing a numbers game. That's just kind of how that works. Facts. Okay. So this week, it, for the people that don't know, we record the episodes a couple of weeks in advance. And this week, right now, your birthday is coming up and you are in the middle of a, a relaunch, kind of a bonus version of Leads Lab that's being put out. And I kind of wanted to talk to you about the differences between selling a course and selling a service because you, sell one-on-one and group coaching and you help people get more clients and you're also selling info products that help that pretty much get people to the same goal. And so I kind of wanted to pick your brain on when it makes sense to be a service provider, when it makes sense to be an, an, an info product provider and maybe the differences, the, the subtle nuances between and contrasting between selling a service and selling a product. There's many, um, but in that context, it comes down to two things. Either you're selling a process or you're selling leadership. If you're selling a process, that process can be turned into a course or online learning. It can be scaled, right? It's a process. There's not one right or wrong it's not either or. It comes down to what's your end goal with it. My end goal is, is I want to work with people. I want to see, I want to see the, the look on their face, right? I want to help somebody understand a process, go put that process in place, and then now they've got other issues. And those other issues are generally very specific to them. And what I like to do is I like to, I like to question people. And I like to help people see different perspectives. And so what it is that is my outcome is is working with people one-on-one and one-on small group after they've understood a process, but there's no right or wrong. There's a lot of people that have amazing businesses and they don't do anything one-on-one and it's, here's this course. And when you get through that course, here's this course. And when you get through that course, here's this course, generally courses are processes, right? If you take a hundred people and you put them all through the same process or the same system, if they do the doing, do they all get a result? That's a process. If you've got something that's a process, then it might make sense to create a course. What I've noticed is a lot of people go, oh, I can make a million dollars a month. All I need to do is take this thing and turn it into a course and go sell courses. But they've not taken clients one-on-one through that process to figure out, does that process work, right? Just because it worked for you to make cereal that way doesn't mean it works for somebody else. Right. For me, I need to have a bowl and I need to pour the cereal in it and then I need to put the milk in it. Some people, I don't know how they do it, but they like, you know, put the milk in the bowl and then put cereal in. I don't know. It doesn't work for me that way. The topic of today's episode is the difference between selling a service and selling a course, knowing when it's the right time to productize your service. There's some services that can't be turned into a product, right? not the way you do it, not the way you deliver it to your clients. Yeah, you can take the A plus B plus C and put that in a course. And if somebody can follow directions, awesome, you've got a course. I don't think they're totally interchangeable. I don't think that all services can be productized. Okay, so I'm going to look at it from my point of view because I write copy for people. I also have a small community where we get different 
really good copywriters and we have them break down how they write sales copy. And I also have a book on writing sales copy that I make available. So I teach people how to write copy or I just write copy for people. And for me, mainly the info product is kind of, it's there for the people that either want to do it themselves or I want to get them to the point where they're actually able to pay me to do it for them. I want educated customers or clients. I want people who understand um, or people, I, I guess maybe indoctrinated is probably the better word. Mm -hmm. um, but for you guys and for the whole sales gorilla army um, kind of culture that you got going on, um, how did, do, how does your approach look? What, where does, where does the info product come in? Where does the one-on-one -on -one come in? Where does the group come in? How are you kind of thinking about how this should be structured? And the reason why I ask this is because I feel like, um, while not everybody has the same thing, I think that there's enough similarities between what I've seen with a lot of my clients and with what you have going on, that there are some um, points that make sense. Like it makes sense to put the cereal in the bowl first before you put the milk in. Not everybody does it, but it does make sense. Mm -hmm. So in my world specifically, there's two main groups of people, those who don't have clients and those who do have clients. And for both of those groups, our product leads lab gets them much more consistently getting clients in a way that's less irritating, less frustrating, less all of that stuff, right? Without using paid ads or webinars and all of that stuff. It's a, it's a first date, right? Somebody comes into our world, they jive with the way that I, I see the world. They want to get clients without being a douche canoe. They get leads lab. If they go through that and put that into practice, they're getting clients without being a douche canoe. If they are then wanting to go to the next level, right? Maybe they're selling a $1,500 a month service or three grand for a sales page and they want to sell us $70,000 sales page. There's a lot of questions between, okay, cool. I'm getting clients for this $3,000 thing. How do I bring that company on board as a client? There's a lot of questions in between there. Leads Lab shows people how to get clients without being a douche canoe. There's a lot bigger fish to fry after you know how to get clients. That's actually what I want to help people with, right? So here, you want to get clients, use this process. It's 30 days, 20 minutes a day, go get some friggin' clients. Now you've got some clients and you've got some revenue, awesome sauce. Now let's work on the bigger picture. And if you want to do that with me, it's not cheap. And there's a bunch of reasons for that, but if I can help somebody get clients and they generate some revenue and they go, Oh wow, this works and I want more. Cool. How bad do you want it? Right? Cause now we're talking about my time and, and my brain power and my me investment into spending time with you to answer those bigger questions. I'm going to make it worth my while, which is kind of how I teach my clients. Right? So in my world, that product leads lab, it's a first date. Right. Mm -hmm. So for the, for the business owner out there or the service provider out there who is, who is um, serving a specific need, how do they determine if it makes sense to, ter to take part of what they're doing and coarsify it or if they should not? Because I think looking in at what you're doing, there's certain parts of what you do that makes sense to have it be a course. And then there's certain parts where I look at what you do and I'm like that, I don't think that that would make sense as a course. So if somebody's out there and they're providing a particular service, how do they know whether they should turn everything they turn it, everything they do into a course, whether they should take part of it and turn it into a course or a, a, a product or whether they should not um, take any of it and turn it into a product? They need to ask themselves this question. What's their end goal? Right. Let's, let's, let's really use an actual real world example. Joe Polish, he owned a carpet cleaning company, right? He started 
cleaning carpets. He got really good at it. He noticed that he didn't struggle with some of the things that other carpet cleaners dealt with, getting clients, getting paid, right? All of those things were really easy for him. And he went, man, like I've got this carpet cleaning company and we make a bunch of money and we've got a bunch of different people that work for us. But we figured out this and this and this that most of the other people like us struggle with. Maybe we should put a course together and teach them how to not struggle here, not struggle here, not struggle here. And boom, it worked. And all of a sudden he had this huge, massive business. He wasn't, clean, he wasn't cleaning carpets anymore. He wasn't even managing the people within the company that he built that were cleaning carpets. He was showing carpet cleaners how to do it a different way. Well, if what your end goal is, is to no longer do the thing that you do really, or to have a much larger business and you figured out how to do some things really well that most people like you struggle with, yeah, it might make sense for you to create a course, right? But let's take that same real world example and let's put it into a different context. Let's take the t-shirt printing company guy. He's got an amazing business making a lot of money every month, like whatever that looks like to you. And he goes, cool. Well, I took this over from my dad 20 years ago and this is the only thing I've ever done. It's the only thing I, I know. And we've got this giant client base because the whole world knows we exist because we've been around since God made dirt. And I don't know, it just happens. I think I should create a course. Cool. About what? For who? To do what? Right? Oh, I want to make, we're making 200 grand a month now and, and I want to make $2 million a month now. I'm going to go create a course. Good luck. Doesn't work that way for most people. So I see two kind of ways that I see people approaching this. Number one, uh, it's the, I figured out how to do this. So I'm going to teach other people how to do it. And then number two is, this is a part of what I do but it could be scaled. It could be better packaged as a course. And so I'm not teaching you how to do what I do. I'm just making it to where you can get the same results that I can get you one-on-one, -on -one, but you can actually get them at a more scalable level. So um, I want to talk specifically about what you did with uh, Leads Lab and the fact that it wasn't the first thing that you put out and the fact that, um, how, how long is, how long had uh, the Gorilla Army Nation been a thing before Leeds Lab became a thing? Two and a half years. So in that two and a half years, what were the lessons and the things that motivated you? What were the things that motivated you and and inspired you and made you realize that Leeds Lab needed to become a thing? Well, really, it was frustration. It was, it was frustration with if I worked with somebody, they, like, they didn't have all of this basic knowledge and, or had any of that stuff in place. And I'm trying to talk to them about how to go from a $3,000 gig to a $70,000 gig, but they didn't have the basics in place. And after, after seeing it with hundreds of people after hundreds of people that they didn't have the basics in place of client acquisition. I was like, Oh, okay, cool. Here's how you get clients. And I didn't, what it was, was it was frustration. They didn't have the basics of client acquisition, the knowledge part or the practice part. And I found myself having to like go back with those people and go over those basic pieces time it and I was just like fuck instead of doing this one on one I can just take the steps step by step by step by step put it in a process here you go cool don't talk to me about working with me one on one until you've got that in place and you're able to get clients once you've got that then we can talk about this bigger shit and it wasn't inspiration it was frustration okay um but that makes sense because I think that that's where a lot of people where where the inspiration to start a or at least to productize part of what they're doing i think that that's a pretty common thing it's it's i'm sick of doing the same thing over and over again where i really want to work at what you call your genius zone in order to get people there i'm having to go through this process over and over again 
why not turn it into a process that can exist without me being there every step of the way? Um, in your opinion, are there, because, and the reason why I ask this is because I see so many, I see so many commercials about what you said, your life's going to be easy and you're going to make a million dollars. Just take whatever that you're doing and turn it into a course and you're going to become an internet billionaire. Is there anybody that it, that it doesn't make sense um, or maybe should think twice before falling for the uh, quick, easy money of an online course who out there should, should, uh, should maybe be wary of that promise. This is an opinion from some jerk on the internet. So don't just take this for face value, but I'm opinionated. Uh, 98% of the people in that marketplace should not create a course. So like, I don't care what it is we're talking about. Being a real estate agent, being a mortgage broker, selling cars, Facebook ads, copywriting, 98% of the people that do it should not create a course. They don't have a completely different way to do it that gets better results. They don't have the the step-by-step -step basic process down pat to where if somebody goes through that process, boom, it just happens. Um, by and large, most of the people that create courses have their own slightly different take on the same thing that everybody else has got and their way of doing it's not so much better than everybody else. And generally, the 98% of the people that create a course, they're looking at this dream of, oh, I can create a course and sell it automatically and make millions of dollars, blah, 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 blah. And that's bullshit. And they spend all this time creating a course and then nobody buys it. Mm. Yeah, um, I, and I'm not going to name names, but I know that there's people that even me and you both look up to that sell this dream that I have to agree with you. I think uh, the majority of the people that buy into to this idea and buy certain products to try and make it happen, I also agree that they're, they don't have any business doing it. Um, man, what a somber way to end the podcast episode. So uh, <laughs> let's just kind of, really quickly recap um, and just get some final thoughts on when you should consider creating a course, what things you should take into consideration when creating a course. And um, gosh, I don't even know if we need to recover who shouldn't <laughs> create a course. <clears throat> There's a lot of ways to scale a business and creating a course is one way to scale a business. It's not as easy or cut and dry or black and white as a lot of people who sell courses on how to make courses make it out to be, right? Um, and for those of you that are listening, if you're smart enough to step back from the entirety of marketing and look at what actually happens, we go from this shiny object to this shiny object, right? Five years ago it was, oh, these things are called webinars. It's an online VSL that you can like create this video and walk somebody through a process. It's amazing. Yeah. Do they still work? Sure. Do they work like they did? No. Why? Because the people that they were selling that process to were people that wanted to create webinars to sell stuff through webinars to other people, right? Like the market does that. Um, scaling a business, creating a course is, is one way. My opinion is if, if you can do your thing at a higher level than most of the people in your space, creating a course on the step-by-step-by-step to effectively create that first date for the people that want to try it for themselves and they want to figure out how to do it and all of that. Awesome. That allows them to get to know you like you trust you see the way that you do it. And then you can use that as a model to upsell to the higher level version of the thing that you want to do. Um, and then your second question was um, what you need before mind. scaling. No, things to keep in mind. If, uh, if people have decided this is because I think like I look at what you did. I look at people like Frank Kern. I look at even in my own business, a lot of people that hire me, it's because they bought my book or it's because um, they've gone through the free market squad. And then they're like, okay, now that I understand this, I also understand that there's a lot more that I don't understand. And I need your hand. I need you to mm -hmm. kind of hold my hand. Um, so things to, if someone decides okay, it does make sense for me to productize at least a percentage of what I'm doing. What are some of the things that they should keep in mind as they do that, that you've learned going through this whole 
process of leads lab? Fundamentally, it's a numbers game. It's quality, it's quantity over quality, right? Selling a course is selling to the masses. Um, it, it changes if, if you are able to go get clients now and you want to productize your things so you can sell a bunch of that without having to be there to deliver it, you're talking quantity over quality. It's a numbers game. And how do you get that sold? It's not the same as just going and getting clients here and there. It's a completely different game. Um, what to keep in mind to sell a course. You need to really know the first step somebody needs to take towards being able to do the thing that you sell as a service. And you need to be able to lay that out in a very concise manner so somebody can follow step by step by step by step and get a result and then go, can you just do this for me? I don't want to do this. That's what you should keep in mind. What's that first step that somebody needs to, to be able to accomplish and take that first step and create a course and then use that as that first date, right? Somebody buys that, they come into your world. Now they're a lot easier to turn into a client for the thing you actually want to do with them. That's what I would say. Awesome. All right, Landon, a lot to think about and some contrary, some contrary opinions to to what a lot of people are saying right now in the marketplace. But I'm going to have to say, I actually agree with you over what I hear a lot of other people promoting out there. So again, thank you. And until next time, where can people go if they want to get more of their gorilla podcast fix? Salesgorillapodcast.com. Bitches. All right, man. We will catch you later. I love some of you. I like most of you. There's a few of you I can't stand. And I'm sure you feel the same way. Peace out, Cub Scouts. Ha, ha, ha.